In this video, I'm going to get you up to speed as quickly as possible on how to develop Rust-based smart contracts using the Soroban SDK. We're going to start by deploying a simple Hello World contract before digging into the nuts and bolts of how you write these smart contracts for the Stellar network. Finally, we're going to create a decentralized application to pass data to and from the blockchain. My name is James Baccini and I'm a developer in residence with Stellar. I'll be creating a series of content for blockchain developers looking to build on Soroban and the Stellar network in the run-up to the Hackathon in London on the 12th of October. The Hackathon is free to enter and if you want to join myself and other developers then there's a link to register in the description. So without further ado, let's jump into the Stellar environment. At the network level, we have a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes or devices running the Stellar core. The nodes process transactions and achieve consensus via a proof of agreement mechanism. Third party developers like myself can take advantage of the application layer, which lets us host our smart contracts within the network. At the data availability level, we have RPC nodes and the Horizon API, which provides access points to this network. When you connect to an RPC node, you're connecting to a device which is participating in the Stellar network. Indexers and Hubble are used to provide historical data for the network. For developers, there's a set of frameworks and tools for building your applications. There's a Soroban SDK, which is widely used to develop Rust smart contracts. There is also the Stellar SDK in multiple languages, JavaScript, Python, Java, Go, PHP, etc. And then there's the Stellar CLI command line utility, which is used by developers for deploying and interacting with contracts and things like that. At the application level, there's user-facing apps such as wallets, passkey authentication, and the Anchor protocol, which is designed as an on-off ramp or a directory of on-off ramps to connect the Stellar network to traditional banking rails. Now let's take a look at a simple Rust program which uses the Soroban SDK. All the code and the command prompts that you see in this video are open source. It's on GitHub and there's a link in the description. This smart contract is fairly standard. You pass in your name and it will return a greeting of hello James. On the first line, we have this no STD that removes the standard library from Rust. We can't use that because it's too big and cumbersome and we can't have that in the contract. Uh, because of size restrictions, there's a size limit of 64 kilobytes on any smart contract. We then import the Soroban SDK with the modules that we want named. We then set up a basic kind of contract structure for hello contract and set up one pubfn, which is a public function for the hello world, or sorry, the hello function. This takes the environmental variable, which is a special value in Soroban, which is used to interact with the blockchain, and also a string, which is the string we're passing in our name. It then combines this with the hello string below, and it turns it into a vector, which is like an expandable array. It will then pass that back to the user. Now let's fire off a command line and deploy this to the Stellar testnet. I'm using Windows Subsystem for Linux here. This is a virtual machine that runs on Windows as Vice. I find it's very well suited for developing Rust applications. The first thing we'll need to do is install Rust. If you go to rust-lang.org, there'll be installation instructions there. We can install this from the command line. Proceeding with standard installation, and that's done. We're now going to add a new target. This is WebAssembly and it's going to allow Rust to compile the smart contract code down to WebAssembly before we deploy it to the network. The final dependency we're going to install is the Stellar client. This is going to allow us to interact from the command line with the Stellar network. We're going to be using a test net today, so let's go ahead and add that. We're then going to set up some new keys. And I'm giving this an alias of James. We can get our address here, which is a derivative of the public key. If you see a long alphanumeric string like this with S on the end, that's the secret key or the private key, and that's the one you don't want to share on GitHub. One of the great things about Stellar is the ease at which you can get testnet funds. It's no hassle at all. This will automatically set up an account with testnet funds, or there's a URL you can use if you want to send testnet funds to any address you want. Let's create a new contract. I'm going to be calling this Hello World. Let's change directory into that, clear this. This will automatically set up a demo directory with a contract and a test suite for a simple Hello World smart contract. So let's go ahead and run the tests. Right, all tests passed, you can tell I didn't write this. Now let's go ahead and compile it. We're using the cargo build command, setting the target to WebAssembly. Great, now it's compiled, let's try deploying it. We have to change the, the file name here, 
remove this underscore. Nope, I was right the first time. And that's deployed now. We've got the transaction ID here and the contract ID, which is this one here. We can now have a quick go interacting with the contract from the command line. Let's paste this in here. I'm going to need to just alter the contract address. Now you know how to deploy contracts. Let's dive into how to write them and what you need to know to be developing the Soroban based smart contracts. If you come from a web dev background, you'll notice that Rust is strongly type language. This means you're going to need to specify and work with specific data types. For that, you're going to need to know what data types there are. And some of these are actually specific to Soroban itself. So the first is a Boolean. This is simply true or false. Integers are whole numbers. An unsigned integer is positive, whereas a signed integer can be negative. So you have different values here, a 32-bit integer to up to 128-bit integer. This can hold different amounts of data. Obviously, efficiency and restricting the amount of data we're storing is very important in smart contract development. So we're going to be using the smallest amount of, or the smallest size of data type we can get away with. If we don't need a gazillion decimals, we can get away with a 32-bit integer. The symbol data type can be imported from the Soroban SDK, and it's a small string up to 32 characters. A vector is a flexible array, which you can grow in size, so you can push data to it, and it's quite a good way to store a sequence of data points. Maps and mapping is widely used in smart contract development to link, it's almost like a key value pair, so for a, a certain address might have a certain balance, and you'd map one data point to another. At some point, you end up working with raw binary data, and this could be encoded using the bytes data type. A string is similar to a symbol, it's just a longer piece of text. An address can either be an end user's address, like we generated when we were deploying the contract, or it could be a contract address, where the contract lives on the network. A struct is a custom layout of specific data types, so you can set these up yourself. If you want to store a almost like a class of information, you can do that with a struct. You can see here we've got a name, an age, an address, and all of those have different data types, and they're all held within this user info struct. Enums aren't widely used in web development, but in smart contract development, they're really useful. Things like delivery contracts or days of the week. On chain, all you're storing is this small numerical value, which makes it very efficient. Whereas within the code, you've got this descriptive value, which makes it more readable. There are functions to switch between different data types, both from kind of native Rust to Soroban, and then also kind of maybe from an unsigned 32 integer to a 128 integer. There's only work with compatible data types. Obviously, you can't convert a struct into a string or something like that. If you're not familiar with Rust, there's some syntax and style guides on the description. Use snake case for variables, functions, and file names, camel net case for struct and enum names, four spaces for indentation, not tabs. Use let for variables, and if you want to make that uh, mutable, so in JavaScript you'd have constant let, whereas in Rust you generally just use let and you'd add the MUT um, modifier to make that mutable so you can change it at a later point in the application. Where possible, you should always use immutable variables because that makes it less things to go wrong. The double colon is used to access items from modules or namespaces. And use a question mark for error handling in functions to return a result or option. Whenever we import a Soroban SDK, we can import modules that we need. So there's a cryptography module which has familiar hashing and ECDSA signature and verifications. We have uh, events integrated. So events work when something happens in the contract, which is significant, you can fire an event and you can listen for this on the front end. So if you have a front end running, you can kind of register for events or kind of event listeners, and then they can make adaptions to the front end when something is fired. So if someone transfers an NFT, it can come up with a notification or something like that. There's native standards for token assets. The, SCP-41 token is very similar to an ERC-20. You've got an interface here, which should look familiar if you've kind of been doing blockchain development in the past. So then we get onto unit tests and optimization. Unit tests are written in Rust as well, kind of similar layout. We have, define it as a test. We import the Soroban SDK. We define a function um, for test hello. This is going to test the hello world contract we wrote earlier. We create, we, well, we pass the environmental value. This is a mock-up of instance of the blockchain. We then define the contract. We create a symbol, a new symbol for world. This would be the person's name that we passed in in that test when we do it on the command line. 
and we call that function and we create an expectation and we assert that expectation is true. Because of the critical nature of blockchain development, you tend to spend a lot of time writing unit tests and working on optimizations and security considerations. So it's worth having a look at some example code on GitHub for production level protocols and the test suites that they've used. When it comes to optimization, you have that 64 kilobyte limit on contract size. It is possible to break down contracts into separate contracts if you kind of start to get too close to that. There's also a, the Stellar client has an optimized function which you can run to try and optimize the code automatically. General kind of blockchain principles apply, minimize the computation, use storage only when necessary, and avoid wherever possible to duplicate code. Within the contract storage, there's three different types. There's the temporary storage, which has the lowest fees, but obviously it's only temporary. Persistent to storage has higher fees and allows data to be archived and restored using special operations. And then there's instant storage, which will live as long as the contract's lifespan. Now let's jump into creating a decentralized application to interact with that Hello World smart contract. So when you're using a standard index.html file in production, you probably want to use like React or Vue or some kind of JavaScript framework like that. For simplicity, I'm just going to be using a single file. I'm going to send a VS code, so it's got the highlighted text, and we can go through this. So we've got a standard HTML page here. We've got a head section and a body section. We've got an input text where, where someone can enter their name, a button to call a contract, and a div to place the result. We then get into the JavaScript. We're importing the latest version of the uh, Stellar SDK.js. If you're using large language models to code something up, be careful because it will often give you an older version with outdated code and nothing works. So you'll be using the latest version, which is currently 12.2. So now we get into our own JavaScript code and I'm gonna be setting up an RPC node. This is a Soroban testnet. And then we are passing in a contract ID to get a instance of the contract. We've got a secret hard coded here. Obviously in production environment, you wanna want to hard code a secret on the front end. You'd put that in, you'd kind of get that from a wallet. And we've got the public key, which is derived from that secret. So we've got the network passphrase here as well, or hard variables. And then we've got a function called call hello world, which is called when the person clicks the button. Let me just show you this, what this front end looks like so you can visualize it. I'm gonna be running this with Node.js HTTP server. So NPX HTTP server. This runs a local HTTP server on your machine and you can open up an instance you can see here we've got Stellar Hello World. You can enter your name and call a contract. In a production environment, if you wanted to get data from the chain, you would generally simulate a transaction rather than distributing a transaction around the network. Assuming you trust your node, you could go to that node and say, in theory, run this transaction and give me back the data that it would, would come out of it and it will pass back that data much more efficiently. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm actually going to build a transaction, sign it, and distribute it around the peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes. So let's go back to VS Code. When we call, click on that button, we're setting up an account using the public key. We're getting a name from the input text, which is here. I'm going to open up the console as well to get some information. And then we're creating a transaction using the Stellar SDK transaction builder. We're passing in the account, the base fee, the network phrase, and then we're adding the operation. So. Here we've got the, in, the hello world function from the smart contract and it's taken an input, which is our name. And we're setting this up here with the uh, Stellar SDK native to scval. We're passing in my name from the form and we're setting the type to a string because the smart contract, if we go into that, here it takes a string as a two variable. So we're setting a timeout to 30 seconds and we're building that transaction. Once we've got the transaction, we're going to call prepared transaction, and then we're going to sign it using the secret that we've got hard coded up here. Normally, this you'd pop an instance of a wallet to sign a transaction like this. I'm going to pass some variables to console logs so we can see what's going on as this is happening, and then we're going to send the transaction to the RPC node. This will distribute a transaction across the decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network. We're going to wait 10 seconds for that to go through, and then we're going to call the get response and call the hash of that transaction. So we're going to, as a return value, we're going to get a transaction hash, which is like a receipt. And we can call that to get the return value from the function. That comes back as raw bytecode. So we're going to set up a text decoder and decode the values that you get in a response. And then we're going to pass them out to the results div as string one and string two. Let's see if it works on video. 
So I'm going to refresh this page. I'm going to enter my name, James, call to contract. You see we've got the prepared transaction here, the transaction result, and this is the hash receipt you get. We can actually put this hash into a block explorer and see that going through as well. And we've got response success. Then we've got the uint array, eight arrays. And we can see once we've decoded this, it comes up to say, hello, James. If we have a new tab and go to stellar.expert, change this to testnet and paste in that hash we just got. And you can see we've got a successful transaction here. And you can see the input and the output from the function call. Again, all this code is in the GitHub repository and in the tutorial link to in the description. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Don't forget there's a hackathon in London on the 12th of October if you want to learn more about building web-free decentralized applications and developing smart contracts in Rust using the Soroban SDK. My name is James Cheney. Thank you for watching.